Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? This is Easy Things to Draw, and today we're gonna go over how uh, to crosshatch with a ballpoint pen. Now, there are different kinds of pens, basically, right? Let me give you the really broad outline. The broad outline to the different kind of pens would be there's a fountain pen, there's a ballpoint pen, there's a fiber tip pen, a roller ball pen, and a gel ink pen. So I'm gonna probably go over most of these, not the fountain pen, cause that's kinda like, the fountain pen is more like a quill kind of thing. And it, it ink, I, it's more for inkings, but man, it really spills sometimes. So I might do that, um, but I'm definitely gonna go over the, the ballpoint pen today. Uh, I'll go over the fiber tip and I'll go over the uh, gel ink one. Uh, those are pretty cool. The rollerball one, uh, maybe it's, rollerball pen is basically the same thing as a, uh, as this kind of pen, the same thing as a, uh, a ballpoint, because this is a ballpoint, uh, except it's kind of like harder to maneuver, you know what I mean? So I might not even do that, but for sure the fiber tip and gel ink will go with those after this, um, you know, in another video. But for now I'm going to show you how I uh, crosshatch in this uh, particular pen. This is the pen I always use, and you guys see me use this a lot, you know, I use this throughout the channel. It's called it's a Zebra F301. It's a ballpoint pen, a regular one. Those pens you get like a, when you're waiting in the waiting room for something, those are ballpoint, you know what I mean? Real easy. So. Let's go over the quick basics of uh, cross-hatching, right? Uh, shading, cross-hatching, cross-shading. Um, for the most part, when you're uh, trying to shade something and you're doing it within within line, you know? Well, for the mo let's start with this. When you're shading something in pencil, you're using the side of a pencil. I'm just grabbing any pencil, right? You're using the side of it, and it's more like a smooth-out process. Um, you know, that kind of thing. You're more pressing it down on that side of it. You know, you're pressing it. This is a little different. This, since you only have essentially one tiny tip, you have to figure out a way to, to do that. And and obviously the, the basics would be, uh, if let's say we're going to go into this little square right now. And let me zoom into that square. So if we zoom into this little square, let's say the light is hitting. Okay, like for example, if... Uh, for the most part, when you're, when you're trying to like fill in a dark space, you want to go to the darkest side. Let's just fill in this entire thing black or, you know, dark. And I'll do it large so you can see it. When you're pulling these lines, I pick one direction. You know, there's like this way, this way, and then diagonally. I'm thinking of those three ways, especially for something that's square. So I'm pulling the lines. I can pull them all the way. I go part the way, usually all the way. Let's just go all the way for all of these. And I'm trying to make that separate, right? So I want to shade that into black. So I'm going that direction now. Since this is a square, I'm going to pull this direction. Because I like to think of like cross hatching as uh, like a net. You know what I mean? It's like this netting you're putting over, you know, to kind of create uh, a shadow. And then also, you're going to go diagonal. You know what I mean? So it's up this way. I put this way, but you know, honestly, it's this direction. Go about the same. I'm kind of going out the lines there, but it's not a huge deal. So generally, if you're like, that's what we're looking at. You know what I mean? If you're just a squint down, that's kind of a darker shape. Uh, you're trying to shade that in black. Uh, but with like this netting, you're trying to create an overall value, kind of like the way pixels are on a screen, a bunch of tiny little pixels create one large, you know, like image. You're trying to do that with line. A bunch of tiny lines will create an overall shape, you know, will create an overall value on its own. Um, to kind of get more into that, let's say there's, uh, so like in reality, you know, you would actually, for me especially, I would like pull in there. I put all these, fi the finer it gets, the darker it gets, you know? So I'd be pulling all these little lines. And there's no rules in terms of what, how, you know, how much they have to be spaced out. It doesn't really matter. Unless you're doing, uh, unless it's part of the calligraphy, you know? Like uh, old comics, you know? Or inkings, you know? When it's, it's part of the design. But if it's not, you're just trying to create an overall value. You know what I mean? Then it doesn't really matter the width between the lines, you know? 
And that's why I always tell you guys to practice that, you know, the whole uh, creating lines. This is going to come in handy in the future, you know, for all kinds of stuff. I was thinking like for, you know, sides of walls or, you know, all kinds of stuff. We'll go over that different shapes in a second here. And then diagonal as well, you know. It's getting darker and darker as you do that. You're filling in those little gaps of white. You know, and you could even do this way. You know, it's a little messy, a little quick, but you you know, you know what I'm saying. So let's go to this square. Let's say you want, uh, like, let's say there's a small bit of value on one side. You know, for example, that happens a lot. Um, like, especially with the sides of blocks, you want one side to be lighter than the other. You mean like you maybe you want the more light to be on this side? Let me uh, see where the camera's. You want more light to be over here. So normally what I do is I would pull these lines. I would push down on them harder toward this toward the bottom. Let's say the light's coming from here, and there's a slow gradation from light to dark. The darkest I'm gonna really push down and like let go as I go up. I'll push down, and as I I'll kind of let it go. Push down. Kind of let it go, let it go, let it go. Oops, that was weird. Push down, let it go, let it go. I mean, that's kind of again the general motion I do. And it'll get a little lighter as it goes that way. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. It's going to get dark over here. Push darker here. Gonna get lighter as I go up. It's gonna get lighter. Same thing right here. This diagonal. Dark. And these I won't even really. These I'm gonna do very flat because they're. It's a directional thing. Lighter as I go over here to the lighter spot. You know what I mean? And that's kind of again. I'm doing it so you can see it. You know when I usually do it. Um, normally I, I try to like fill in these gaps as much as I can. You know what I mean? I try to finesse them as much as I can within the moment, you know, time permitting. Um, and you start to create this slow gradation, kind of like that. Um, let me kind of go over a shape before I go on to the next one. This shape. Well, actually, well, let me go into the act. Like, so, over here, let's pick out this box. Let's say the light is coming from here. And it's hitting the front of that box. If you want some halftone on there, and I'll go over actual general shading later. If you want a little bit of halftone, I go with this. And I slightly throw a little bit of halftone over here because it's kind of touching the ground. Because it's furthest away from the light. I might throw a little bit here. Like, I mean feather touch, you know. But I'll be doing that same motion. I just kind of went over. I might even push my finger through it because this is a ballpoint pen. And uh, the ballpoint pen's a little sketchier than the other kind of pen, so I like that. But let's say, and then this this side's totally in light and dark. Sorry, this side. So this is the dark side. And I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna kind of remember that pattern essentially, but I'm gonna go nuts with it, you know, because that pattern is a guideline. It's not a total rule. You know what I mean? So I'm pulling all these lines. Filling them in right here. Okay, there's that. And then let's say there's going to be more light up there. I might actually go this way. On that, it's in perspective, so I'm gonna try to go with the form. And also diagonal a little bit. Diagonal. Let's see, I'm doing it quick and fast. You know, I'm doing it quick, 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 quick. Because it starts to become intuitive at some point. You know what I mean? It's actually very easy. It's extremely easy to do. You know, you kind of try squinting your eyes a little bit so that you can kind of even stuff out as much as you can. 
But this is, by the way, this is like, again, the reason I, I make this specific to the ball point is this is how I shade with a ball point. You know, this is how I crosshatch with a ball point. You know, I wouldn't do this with a, like, fountain pen. You know what I mean? That would be very different. It's a little bit more structured, you know, because it's like a big ink blot, like, bam, you know, on your paper. This one, you can be sketchy with it. Go everywhere, follow the form. Uh... Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Let me zoom out a little bit. It comes together the more you zoom out. Uh, let me go over here into this shape. So we're going to talk about rounded shapes a little bit. So let's talk about the cone. Because I had a choice whether to go with the circle or the cone. And I'd rather go with the cone. I didn't want to go with the both. I thought that would be very repetitive. So with the cone, let's say the light's also coming from this side. Bam, right at the front. Um, let's say the shadow side, let's say this is the line where the, you know, this is the dark side over here, and this is the light side. You also have to remember that these little lines, see the lines I made, right? Try to think of them as, like, like they're literally there. You know what I mean? Try to think like if somebody laid a piece of string over that box, over that form, whatever that may be. That's why I always say think in 3D. So these lines I'm going to do, these diagonal lines, whatever, these parallel lines, parallel lines. Yeah, essentially they're parallel. Um, these lines I'm putting on here are going to kind of mimic the form that it's on right here. See? I'm slightly curving them. All the way up. And it gets smaller as it goes up. The cone, you know, as the form gets smaller. So does the shadow. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to slightly angle it, change the angle of it, but keep staying on that line. This is all, you know, stuff that, you know, you did, like, they teach you in college, you know, in basic uh, art class in college. Same thing. You angle that line a little bit, and it gets a, a little bit more value across. There's no... There's not so many wedges in the middle. And then you do... You angle it the other way. Until these things tie together to create a single, you know, a single kind of uh, mass of shadow, you know. And it looks more stylistic. Something looks complicated about it and you can't figure it out. Well, at least the general, I mean, audience doesn't figure it out, you know what I mean? It's uh, a very cool thing, you know what I mean? We can go this way. I'm going to put tiny, like all this stuff is just like real tiny, like I'm throwing this little tiny, tiny. And these tiny things add up, like I said, you know what I mean? It's better than just like and putting it totally flat. Even when I do it in pencil, I kind of do this as well. I, I, I kind of go with the, the form of what I'm doing, you know. I push with the form, the roundness of the form, or whatever form maybe. If it's a bicep or if it's like, you know, end of a car or something like that. And then pull here again. On the bottom. And after this, this is how I refine. You know, I've told you guys while I'm drawing, I'm kind of refining something. A lot of it is like fixing these small lines, you know what I mean? So that they kind of smooth out together. You know what I mean? It's like smoothing out a, I don't know, like a, like a physical bunch of sticks or something like that. You're just trying to smooth it out so that there's as little transition you know, I mean, for the eye, it's as little bumpy roads as you can. And same thing with this form. Even the triangular. I'm going to put as many lines as I can that way. That one's going to be real dark. As many lines. That was a noise. What, what noise was that? Many lines of that direction. And again, I'm going to pull in this different direction. A lot of these things are perpendicular to each other. It 
if they're all going one direction, it might not look right, you know? So that's why I kind of, you have to net it in there. You know what I mean? If you want to create a net that won't let any fish out, you know what I mean? You want to like keep crossing it over and over and over and over again. It doesn't let that light out, that white of the paper out as much. Or just at the point that you want it to. Corner which way direction. Let's say I want to darken this side over here. Like, well, let's say I want to darken this side over here. I just keep throwing that those lines lightly, lightly. And by the way, don't push too hard. Like I said, I, I usually do it very light, and I let it build up as opposed to throwing a super hard line down there. You know what I mean? Just take time. Just do this motion. If you just keep doing this motion right here, like if you keep doing that, it's just gonna build up slowly. Let it build up, build up. Right? Let it build. Can't emphasize that enough. Don't rush it. Blank over there. But that's essentially how I shade. And almost every, because uh, every every video I use this pen with, that's pretty much what's going through my head. You know what I mean? That's the exact process. Um, just think about that. And then, you know, honestly, it shouldn't be too hard. You know, um, this isn't the actual, like, how to shade in general. I didn't go over, like, cash shadow, all that stuff. This is just, I'm just telling you exactly how I cross hatch with that. I'm gonna make another video specifically about only shading, you know, itself, but this is how you cross hatch, you know what I mean? Uh, with a ballpoint pen. Anyways, thanks a lot guys. I'll uh, talk to you later and see you next time. Thanks for watching the tutorial guys. I really appreciate it. If uh, you like that tutorial, you might uh, like this playlist. Uh, the playlist in the top left hand corner is on drawing a person. It's kind of drawing the human body, the head, lips, mouth, uh, body, anatomy, kind of stuff, you know, tricep. Uh, that's all on this playlist in the top left hand corner. You can click on that and it'll open it right up. Uh, the bottom right hand corner is the Armadillo pencil case, which is a pencil case that we sell, uh, we sold on Kickstarter for a couple years and now is, uh, you know, doing really well still. I'm very happy we promoted at Comic Con just lately. And, uh, you know, check that out at the bottom right hand corner. That's really cool. And then the top right hand corner is the other channel I have, which is called Enzyme Art. That's a different kind of teaching. It's not updated nearly as much as this page. It's just a like a different kind of passion project for art. You know, when you when you dig art, you want every facet of it. You know, kind of like covered. You know, so anyways, check that out as well. Subscribe to that channel. That one's gonna be updating soon. And uh, all right, guys, I'll see you later.